like and subscribe to Michigan Streets and Eats. off of you enjoying that so this is um, something that is called Pinot de Charente um, which is made from the same grapes that, uh, grapes that cognac is made with um, so with that cognac as we know is a liqueur that has much higher alcohol um, with this they're not actually turning it into uh, a hard liqueur but alcohol hangs out more around 18% um, would be enjoyed as like an after dinner uh, glass you know something really nice to finish the meal it's not quite like you know with this one it was a little more um, thick and like uh, had a little bit more of um, a fullness in the mouth like this drinks a little bit lighter um, and I just adore it it's so good especially if you want to get fancy and do like a flamed orange peel or just over some ice or even just chilled by its own um, amazing with dessert amazing with dessert but just to mention this too so for 42 uh, or um, yeah the 42 ice wine. So that has to do with it being on the 42nd parallel, but I think it's made in Michigan. Um, I really, really like this. It's it's a little funkier. It has uh, definitely a very sweet characteristic. So whereas like something like Pinot de Chiron, which is more of a dessert wine, so fortified, higher alcohol, this is a ice wine. So they actually wait until the grapes freeze and that first frost um, and then press them after that. So you're left with like a really, really sweet uh, very very luscious dessert wine, um, which is cool. Yeah, Michigan's really you know perfect for that climate. You think about how cold it gets up north, you know. All right. So this is the Grand Beck Sparkling Pinot Noir. It comes from South Africa. Um, so Pinot Noir. A lot of people when they think of French Champagne, you know, it has that nice like kind of toasty golden color to it. A lot of people don't realize that Pinot Noir is used in a lot of those blends, making those grapes. Because a lot of people just think, you know, Pinot Noir is a red grape. It would have to look like a red wine or have some kind of uh, blush to avoid that. Now, that just has to do with skin contact. Mm -hmm. So if the winemaker decides to leave the pressed grapes in contact with the rest of it, that's when uh, you get a little more color. Ooh, cheers. So I can say I thoroughly enjoyed the Char Chuterie. Hopefully I'm saying that right. Um, I think Cliff can attest to that as well. Did you enjoy it, Cliff? This this wine, it was, was beautiful. Real beautiful. It, it, it'll it take you there smoothly. I've enjoyed the whole atmosphere here. Um, Taylor has been um, awesome, just informing us on the different wines, uh, a little bit of the history, uh, providing us with the food, providing Cliff with samples. I definitely think that you should come to the Royce Detroit. Even if you're not a big wine fan, I think that you'll definitely get a, a bigger appreciation for wine itself. You know, a lot of people prefer drinking beer or liquor, but there's definitely a smoothness and an art to wine, and the Royce Detroit is definitely the place you want to come to. Hey, 
you should come to the Broys. Um, we're all really fun. There's lots of great wine. Uh, you're bound to come in and try something that you haven't tried before, no matter what level you are uh, in your experience with wine. Um, you know, most of the wines that we feature are from smaller production uh, wineries uh, and really highlight just a more natural style of winemaking. So I think uh, even with the price points being on an everyday level, um, you know, good wine is something that you can enjoy every day and not have to break the budget. Uh, and then on Wednesdays, we have our free tasting from 5.30 to 7, uh, so a fantastic time to come by as well. So now, as you're drinking the drink, the notes in the glass itself are going to play off of the notes in the scent as that evaporate and sort of surrounds the drink.